you are with the big story here. I'm Seher Zama. Let's make a start with these inputs that are coming in of the central government uh, finally setting out uh, a final date. Remember, these have been exams uh, uh, that were delayed and now the new dates that have come in here in the wake of this pandemic. The HRD ministry saying that NEET exam, the date for the entrance of NEET is going to be 26th of July and G mains will be held from 18th July up to the 23rd of July. The G advance exams to be held then later in the month of August. These are the details coming in from the government. Uh, remember, uh, the government has to give out dates uh, uh, for these major exams, uh, other examination dates that are awaited as well. But to make a start, government giving more clarity for G mains and NEET. Our correspondent Ayushman is getting us those inputs here. Ayushman, uh, how this will be executed? Of course, we're looking at the month of July. Uh, Possibly, hopefully, we're going to be in a better situation. Uh, but this is, of course, going to be done keeping in mind social distancing norms to be followed uh, at the examination centers uh, and how further this could be executed here. Yes, sir. And for that reason, only ample time has been kept in hand in order to uh, facilitate the examinations of uh, J uh, joint entrance examination of engineering and also national interest test for uh, medical uh, both these tests uh, are expected to take place in the month of July. On uh, mm. July 26th, we will see NEET to uh, be there in the country. And uh, on from 18th of July till 23rd of July, the JE uh, main examination will be there. And uh, the advanced uh, examination of uh, JE will be taking place somewhere in August. The detailed uh, date sheet will also be coming shortly. But also, uh, the, uh, the announcement was made by the HRD minister today while he was interacting with the students on their queries. Uh, the students also posed question as to when the class 10th and 12th examinations will be taking place. Uh, very soon, the HRD ministry says that the uh, dates will be out for that as well. Yesterday only we saw the UPSC civil services examination for the prelims, uh, which was expected to take place on May 31st. Uh, the UPSC said that uh, because uh, of the current circumstances, that cannot be mm -hmm. uh, done right light of that only we we were being given a sense that in may uh, mostly the uh, government will not be conducting the examination now the uh, dates have come out and in july we are expecting both je mains as well as net to take place and uh, je advance will be taking place in august sir right so this is about two months of preparation uh, and uh, both for the students and the government to make this happen and executing it smoothly as well. Ayushman, thank you for those details. Let's now get you further inputs coming in. This is regarding the ongoing crisis of the movement of migrant workers and laborers who have continued to remain stranded and the process of getting them back home now. Hundreds of Rajasthan migrants here are still stuck in the state of Karnataka and now they're alleging that they're being charged. They're being charged both for the tickets and the registration. Remember, central government has made it clear that 85% of the ticket that would be borne by the central government, the remaining 15 to be borne by the state government. Questions now being asked regarding why they're being charged here of the Karnataka government. They have been rendered jobless as far as stranded migrants is concerned with not a penny in their pocket and still being charged. Our correspondent Deepak getting us further inputs here on this. A variety of issues are being faced by the people who've been stranded in Bengaluru for over 40 days now, now looking to go back home. Here are a bunch of people who want to go back to Rajasthan, most of them from there now here at palace grounds even as arrangements are being made and you can see here now buses are full of these passengers are being taken to uh, you know railway stations where they will head back to rajasthan in the designated train the concern here is you know how it's being managed uh, for one of course the queues are going on for now the third day while these are people who are standing outside who've been told that today they will not be allowed to board the train because there is no space there are over 100 who are standing in uh, queue apart from these people still waiting so that they could head back uh, and you know that uh, they have been told that they will be allowed to board the train today let's try and speak to these people the bigger concern of course is the government charging them to travel in these trains thousand rupees per head is what's being charged ab bata sakte hain aapko kitna charge kiya ja raha hai aur kaun si app through aap register kiya sir per passenger ka thousand rupees charge kiya ja raha hai और गवर्नमेंट की कर्नाटक गवर्नमेंट की सेवा सिंधु जो है वेबसाइट उस पर सब ने रजिस्ट्रेशन किया था रजिस्ट्रेशन करने के बाद में ये लोग यहाँ पे सब लोग यहाँ पे पहुँचे 
और आधे लोगों को भेजा आधे लोगों को अभी नहीं भेजा इनको कहाँ जाएंगे कैसे करेंगे कुछ समझ में नहीं आ रहा है और ये जो चार्ज कर रहे हैं इतना प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है आपको ये पैसा देने में बिल्कुल जो भी यहाँ पे जो सर्विस बेस्ड जो भी है यहाँ पे जितने भी आपके साथ खड़े हैं वो सर्विस वाले बंदे हैं सब अब ऑलरेडी पाँच सौ छः सुबह ऑटो में देकर आगे अब ये लोग जाएंगे कैसे खाएंगे क्या कुछ समझ में नहीं आ रहा है well you know you heard the, the problems that they've been facing here and you know they're showing uh, you know even in the phone you can see the messages from uh, the official app where they're being charged 1000 uh, rupees uh, to actually board these trains of course probably now not, may not be very clearly visible uh, but overall you know some uh, good samaritans here are distributing water and food for these people who have been waiting for hours together in the scorching heat who've been saying for 45 days they've not had a source of income paying uh, you know an, uh, over 500 rupees to just get here so that they can register to get on a train now some of these people not even being able to do that in the state of telangana a special announcement that is coming from the state government in saying that they are starting 40 trains to operate daily so this is 40 special train services operating daily today onwards uh, this is going to be for a duration of a week to help migrants reach back their homes the trains that will be running from hyderabad varangal kamam to bihar odisha and jharkhand this is where the hometowns and the villages of the migrants are uh, the first of the trains that left uh, early this morning at around 2 am there are around 1200 migrant laborers on the train we'll get further details our correspondent paul is getting us those inputs here uh, paul uh, it seems the telangana state government uh, has this handled well in a smooth facilitation unlike the chaos that we've seen in the state of karnataka here and team kcr put out a press release from his office saying that 40 trains on a daily basis for the next 7 days this decision after a high level meeting was held to discuss about the crisis situation in which a migrant labor are anxious to head back home but rules do not allow them to cross the state so that is when they decided instead of waiting for their respective state to get in touch with the telangana government uh, they also uh, realized that a lot of state governments were not ready to bear the cost mm-hmm. to take back their own people to the state there that is when cm kcr decided it's time to walk the talk he decided that 40 trains per day for the next 7 days would be operated from out of telangana and various districts not just hyderabad varangal uh, uh, in fact throughout the state various trains would be starting heading towards bihar jharkhand odisha west bengal rajasthan etc all this for the migrant labor who will only have to okay. now reach out to the nearest police station get the names registered and then from there they would be given information when the train would be uh, leaving so it, they have made the process much more easier than they uh, what they had initially thought and hopefully this will um, this will help reduce the mm-hmm. anxiousness and the 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 worry that the migrant labor have been suffering for the last several weeks that's right uh, facilitating their travel and of course uh, not charging them either uh, being true to what has been promised there uh, that they will not be charged for travel and food on board during the travel as well paul thank you for getting us those inputs now there are about uh, 10000 migrants who are stuck at a private factory this is in maharashtra and this is in raigarh district they've been stuck this issue that has been raised by congress leader sanjay nirupam there he's posted a video here on this alleging uh, that these workers they've been stuck in this very factory for the past 40 42 days of the lockdown of what we've seen uh, neither the factory owners nor the police are allowing them to step out they've literally been holed in in this factory premises there are migrants uh, there are stuck once again and this is more than 600 who are from tamil nadu and they've been stuck in uh, they were stuck in another district of maharashtra and this is in sangli district they had come to sangli for training and they're stuck because of the lockdown they've been told that they will now be sent back which was on the 4th of may uh, and since then regular food supply there has not been provided to them either tamil nadu rajya sabha mp shanmugam has also written here to the chief minister udhav thakre seeking their help to bring the workers here back home let's get in a word from our deputy news editor mayuresh is getting us those inputs here mayuresh these are two separate incidents in two separate districts in in large number of migrants who have remained stuck at factories at training centers across maharashtra uh, what is the chief minister of maharashtra assured here in this 
Uh, we had a word with the uh, uh, with the garden minister of Sangli. We said that uh, they are reaching out to all these people. More than 600 people have been stranded. They had come there for the training, but after the training purpose, uh, they were uh, they were told that on 4th of May only uh, they will be sent back. But still, uh, they haven't have not been sent back. They are still there. So the garden minister of Sangli, Jan Patil, uh, is in touch with these guys and he is helping out uh, and uh, on the behalf mm -hmm. of Maharashtra government. But whereas on the uh, part of Raigad, where 10,000 uh, right. laborers basically have been stuck, there is no update. The government is yet to reach out to these 10,000 uh, laborers and uh, hear them what exactly they want and uh, and help them out. That's right. But Mayuresh, have they been uh, provided? Of course, they have uh, the shelter. They've literally hold in in the factory premises. But have they been provided food and other facilities in all these 40 days? They have got the food and everything. But the major demand of which they are asking for, they want to go back to their uh, respective states. And that's why uh, they did a flash protest uh, with the visuals which we are showing to our viewers. Right. Mayuresh, many thanks for getting us those inputs. Uh, on that note, here on The Big Story, we're slipping into a very tiny breather. Stay on with us, please. Uh, we'll be back in just a bit with more in your news and updates. Thank you for staying on. Uh, let's, in fact, get you uh, this process uh, of uh, increasing taxes. Each of the respective state governments are increasing taxes on alcohol, increasing VAT on petrol and fuel. Uh, and this is uh, for uh, increasing state revenue. For now, we have two states. They have increased uh, VAT on petrol and diesel prices, and this is to make up for losses that have incurred in the face of this lockdown. Uh, massive losses that have occurred with two states who are looking at shoring up some revenue. Let's first get you updates that are coming in of fuel prices now in the national capital in Delhi. Value-added tax on diesel in the national capital that has almost doubled. From 16.75%, uh, it has increased to 30% now. This is how much more costly fuel is going to cost uh, you if you're out on the road, part of essential services or reporting to work there uh, with the prices of diesel, which is almost 70 rupees per litre. VAT on petrol that has been increased by 3%, which has now gone up to 30% from the previously 27% limit that we had. This hike in value-added tax, uh, prices of petrol there today are almost, uh, if we look at New Delhi, uh, they're almost 70 rupees per litre in Delhi. Let's also get you inputs now that are coming in from the state of Tamil Nadu, which is the second state to have done exactly the same. Uh, prices of diesel increased by more than 2 rupees per litre. And the state now hopes to generate approximately 250 crores of revenue per month with this hike that they've put in VAT for fuel prices. Our correspondent Ayushman getting us further inputs here. Uh, Ayushman, these are figures that are coming in both from Delhi and Tamil Nadu. Uh, Delhi, of course, has already uh, given out uh, how much they have lost in tax collection in the past month of the past 40 days of the lockdown. Uh, and this is to generate revenue. Aishman, is my voice going through, please? Aishman, if you could get us further details on the explanation now that has come in from the Delhi government here uh, on, on the reason that they've done this. Uh, it's, it's for the sake of earning revenue for the Delhi government. But once again, you have the common man uh, being burdened with this hike. All right, we seem to have a bad audio connect there. But let's move on to other news here. This is breaking inputs coming in. And here's the news that's now coming in from Mumbai. Mumbai deputy mayor has tested positive for COVID-19. Remember, Mumbai being one of, uh, in fact, the worst affected big city, big metro here, uh, with a continuous rise in cases that continue to come in. Uh, and this one is now coming in as a confirmation. Mumbai's deputy mayor has tested positive. Uh, Deputy Mayor Himangi Varlikar has tested positive for COVID-19. She has been admitted to hospital. This is the global hospital is what it is called, is where she has been admitted.
These are breaking inputs coming in of the Mumbai deputy mayor who's now been tested positive. Uh, she has immediately been uh, admitted to hospital. Mumbai deputy mayor uh, Himangi Vurlikar has tested positive. Remember, uh, Mumbai is the worst affected big metro, big city is what we're looking at. Uh, even if we look at cases from within Maharashtra, Mumbai that continues to have the highest number of spike of a single day uh, in, uh, in multiple such uh, areas that have been identified as containment zones as well. Uh, specifically as far as Dharavi is concerned there where the numbers that continue to rise but uh, Mumbai has also had a, also a heavy number of journalists who have tested positive heavy number of police officers who have tested positive as well and have been sent back home uh, for recovery and at hospital several have been quarantined as well but this is the latest coming in regarding the deputy mayor who has also now of Mumbai tested positive and more breaking inputs. This is uh, yet another big government office uh, in the national capital in Delhi that has been impacted. The INB ministry has closed in Shastri Bhavan because a COVID positive case that has been detected in the building. This is coming in from uh, another ministry office uh, once again. Right now, it is the Information and Broadcasting Ministry which has been shut. This is in Shastri Bhavan because of positive case. Our correspondent Ayushman getting us those details here. Ayushman, what more can you get us on this case, please? Uh, one positive case has been detected from uh, law ministry and uh, due to that reason only because it uh, functions from Shastri Bhavan, a portion of Shastri Bhavan has been closed mm -hmm. and Bone only we have the INB ministry and the INB ministry has said that currently they, uh, the sanitization work is going on and for that reason only the uh, the officers of INB ministry in the Sasti Bhavan will be closed. This case is uh, coming from uh, a person who was working in the law ministry so that office has been closed. So a portion of the, law, uh, the Sasti Bhavan has been closed. Okay. After Ayushman Bharat and Niti Ayog then this is Sasri Bhavan that we are witnessing that the office has been closed because one of the person has tested positive. After the uh, sanitization, the office will be closed for, uh, you know, for the resumption of services. That's right. Aishwan, important to note that we're looking at a couple of ministries' work and offices that have been impacted because of this one positive case there. Yes, sir. In fact, uh, one case, this case uh, is coming from the Ministry of Law. And uh, since the office is uh, located in Sastri Bhavan, the person who uh, whose co close contacts have been told to go in a home quarantine for about 14 days. And currently, the, the sanitization work is going on in Sastri Bhavan. And for that reason only, the uh, building has been closed for uh, uh, there will be no work carried out. And the federal government officers, including other ministries, are also there in Shastri Bhavan, but for now we have been told that a portion has only been closed and uh, this uh, uh, will be closed till the sanitization work is mm -hmm. going on. All right, Ayushman, many thanks. Uh, getting us a confirmation of those breaking inputs here coming in. Remember, Shastri Bhavan, uh, which is uh, a massive government office complex there, one case reported positive. Availability of liquor, which had been made clear by certain state governments, this is on relaxations of the lockdown, but the massive queues and the chaos that we'd seen across several parts of the country just yesterday in several state governments saying that they've been unable to manage the crowd. Today, uh, there has been a hike in tax as far as alcohol is concerned. This is to uh, discourage the long queues. Uh, two states have hiked alcohol prices and this is by a massive margin. A day after it increased alcohol prices, Andhra Pradesh has uh, hiked liquor prices by another 50% today. Uh, that comes about to a total of 75%. Even the Delhi government uh, has introduced, which, is, which it is calling, this is hiked tax under the name of special corona fees, which 70% tax that has been imposed on the MRP of the liquor prices in the national capital. Our correspondent Alok is getting us further inputs here on this. Uh, Alok, uh, this is very similar to uh, uh, fuel that we are seeing. Alcohol, liquor prices have been hiked again, uh, not necessarily this time for earning revenue, but more importantly, to be discouraging those large crowds, to not being able to maintain those social distancing norms uh, for the administration there. 
Yes, absolutely. But uh, unfortunately, we are not witnessing this uh, on the. Oh, we seem to have uh, frozen on that line uh, with Alok. Uh, we'll get you uh, further details here on this in just a bit. But to help you understand why two state governments have decided to do this here uh, is because of the massive crowds that we've seen. Uh, there was a rush. There was, there was literally a mass gathering to buy alcohol, social distancing norms that could not be followed. Uh, and the situation was intense in certain areas where uh, the police had to resort to lati charge. The police had to resort to tear gas shelling in one certain cases. As well. Alok getting us those details here. Alok, one would think this is coming in on a very discouraging note that people who had been waiting for alcohol liquor stores to reopen, but this is going to be on a 70% uh, more expensive price now. Uh, laborers have now escaped. They have escaped from a shelter home. This is in West Delhi's Chandnagar area. Large number of people who were kept at a government school. Remember, this was converted to a shelter home for, for laborers. Uh, they have broken the gate and they have escaped. Uh, they were laborers who were rounded up during the lockdown uh, when they were on their way home. This is uh, yet another aspect to the migrant and laborer crisis now. Those who were kept in the shelter home have uh, escaped. They have literally broken out of this shelter home in Chandnagar area, which is in West Delhi. Remember, they were they were caught heading back home. They were probably footing the distance. Uh, they were intercepted by the police and then brought back. And this is where they were accommodated. But now they have escaped. We'll get you more details here on this and how many total numbers are we looking at? Uh, exactly which state do they belong? And why have they not been provided these buses and special trains now to be headed back home? For them to have broken out in this extreme measure to literally escape from the shelter home. Well, stay on with us, please. Uh, it is a wrap on the show, but we'll continue getting you those inputs, more details on that and much more in just a bit. <laughs>